Um, how many of y'all were in the Dow meeting yesterday? Okay, now how many of you have seen my winter talk? Okay, you have probably about to see what I'm going to talk about today. Those of you that have not, um, feel free to interrupt at any time. I think we've got another, what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, so, so feel free, if you got a question, just pop it out there. You're not going to bother me. I have been warned not to talk about hormones. That if, if, if I did, I, she, she was going to get mad at me. So the only thing I'll say is, do y'all know how to make a hormone? <laughs> Kick her in the knees. Talk about hormones. <laughs> Kick her in the knees. Okay. I talked about this yesterday in all my grower meetings. Um, you know, I've had the, you know, kind of the privilege to work with a lot of experimental herbicides. I came out of a cotton and soybean background in graduate school and got to rice and really didn't know a whole lot about it, to be honest with you. Uh, the first day I was at work at the University of Arkansas in 1996, I planted rice. Uh, the second day I was at work, I went to a grower meeting and a county, and a county agent meeting county agent asked me, he said, do you know anything about rice? And I said, yeah, 100% more than I knew yesterday, which was true. But the, the neat thing is, is the amount of development that has gone on in rice. When you look at other crops, nobody, no other crops had the herbicides that have been labeled in rice over the, just for my career. I went back one time and, and he, I can probably average out about a new herbicide a year that has been labeled in rice in the last 20 years or so. In 2015, I had 11 experimental herbicides. In 2016, I had 14. Of the 11, I had five in 2011. In 2015, I did not have in this 14 in 2016. So it was almost a new crop of new herbicides that, that came into the program. And what I mean by new program, new herbicides, of course, the Provisia not labeled yet, Loyant, that was a big, big, uh, that got talked about quite a bit yesterday, and of course, benzo bicyclone. That includes the, the rice one, which is the, the command and, and uh, uh, pro, uh, pendimethylene mix that, that RiceCo has. Uh, I am working closely with a Japanese company the last few years. I think we've looked at, you guys helped me out, probably seven different herbicides from them, and they keep flipping back and forth. And, and this past year, we had three of their experimentals. So we, uh, you know, again, I think there's still a lot of development in, in rice. Of course, not only are we looking at Provisia herbicide, we're looking at Provisia, the, the, the rice line that Steve has developed. Uh, we went in back a couple of years ago when he had narrowed it down to, and when you talk about Steve narrowing it down, you know, he's got 10 or 15 lines. Uh, we actually ran screening for him on those to try to see the tolerance level that we have with Provisia. Uh, Neely Sprangle Top for us is really beginning to be big. Uh, it's, a, it's a big problem in Texas. Uh, I've talked to some folks in North Louisiana right on the Arkansas line. It's starting to show up there. The one thing, I wish I had a photo of it. You guys that don't know what this looks like, it looks very similar to basey grass, except that the racemes, as it's going up the stalk, they're about an inch and a half long instead of three to four inches long, and about the same number, if not more. Uh, it's a very small, small seeded grass. You could probably, Eric Bajeron's in the back, Eric's the one of my students that's working on that. I think we could probably put it in a salt shaker and, and shake it out, that's how small the seed is. And coming off of the plant, it's extremely viable. So, you know, one plant's producing thousands of seeds. I, my estimation is somewhere around 10% of that is probably viable as it comes off the plant. It does not, what we found, it does not like to germinate much less, much more than about a half inch below the surface. Our best, our best germination in our research is shown if we just sprinkle it on top of the ground, which with more no-till that we're doing, we're just sort of making this weed more and more of a problem because we're not working ground like we used to, and it's a, it's a surface germinator. We got a lot of perennial grasses. If you saw me talking yesterday, we got a lot of perennial grasses in Louisiana that we deal with. Uh, still working on those. The benzo bicyclone is one that I really like this herbicide, but the, the one thing, good or bad, it has to be put in the water. It does not work where very well where you put it on dry ground. If you can put it on dry ground and get the water on there almost immediately, it, it'll do okay. 
it's much better though in water. Uh, but the best way I can describe it, it really has a residual in the water. It will hang around for a while. Really good duck salad herbicide. Uh, rice has a, a fair, it's fairly tolerant of it. We've had a few issues with the injury, but it tends to grow out of it in most cases. But again, something that's going to be need need to be put in the water. If you're an ore drown guy, it's something sort of similar to that. The deeper the water, the more it likes it too. Uh, talk a little bit about Provisia rice and the, the long-term uh, rotations that we've been doing. These are large blocks. They're half acre in size. We had we set this up. We actually did a study prior to this for the prior four years, uh, starting in 2008 or nine. I can't remember. And then we came back when we started looking at we were going to get Provisia. We started another long-term rotation. This is on a grower field, uh, just sort of southwest of Crowley. We had five rotations, and then this is what we did. Uh, the blue is 2013, the, the yellow uh, is 2014, the red 2015, and then <coughs> the, uh, 2016 we rotated back to the, the, the farmer rotation and the rice, so the, the grower planted the 2016 crop for us. So for example, I tell people if you got weedy rice, right here's the minimum uh, rotation, a soybean, 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 three years in a row, and then followed by clear field hybrid rice. We are very uh, uh, aggressive with our herbicide programs and these soybean programs. For example, uh, in 2013, this was Outlook uh, plus Zidua plus Roundup at, at the first trifoliate leaf, and they came back with another shot of Roundup. 2014, we actually rotated, not only were we rotating uh, we didn't necessarily rotate crops in 2014, but we rotated our mode of action. So we went to Liberty Link rice right here. So we had Liberty Link with the Zidua and Outlook in it as well in the first shot of Liberty, and then back to Roundup Ready beans here, and then Clearfield rice. So just to kind of give you an idea of what we were work looking at, at the end of the year, our fallow field here had 101,000 weedy rice plants uh, per acre. When you look at the rotation that we ran in that fallow, we were fallow, provisia rice in the second year, soybean, uh, Roundup Ready soybean, Clearfield rice, back to Clearfield rice in 16, we cut those numbers to 36, 36 plants. So we're making a dent, are we cleaning it up? No. And maybe another set of rotations, maybe another year of beans would do us quite a bit of help here with coming out of that Clearfield rice. But again, you're talking Clearfield hybrid, we may have created another problem because we've got that coming back and if we've got any dormancy issues with that seed, if any of it hit the ground and with the weather that we had in August, the 20 inches, 20 inches of rain, 36 inches of rain, or how much it was, a lot of our rice went down in Crowley area. What we did is right outside the, 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 the area that we have been using, our large plots, again, we use the same plots year after year. I went just adjacent to our plot area and marked off an area as big as our plots looking at the grower program. The grower program was Roundup Ready, Clearfield Rice, Roundup Ready, Clearfield Rice. So he was in that soybean rice rotation. His plants at the end of the, I don't know what we started with here, but he was still at almost 61,000 plants per acre uh, with that rotation with a, with a uh, soybean rice rotation. So I think we're making dents. Is it perfect? No, but I'd much rather see these kind of numbers than this kind of number. And to kind of show you, I think you can see a little bit better in a smaller room, this is what you, you know, we're looking at real high populations of, of weedy rice there at the end of the year. And again, I'm lumping everything into weedy rice, whether that's a hybrid that's come back, whether that's an outcross, or whether there's actual red rice in there that's still susceptible to, to clear field. That potential, you know, you get every, when that hybrid comes back, you get every growth habit in the world, tall, short, multiple tillers, very few tillers, dark green, light green, on, no on, long grains, medium grains, it's a little bit of everything. This is what the Provisia looks like. Uh, back when I first started out of school, when I was working in Arkansas, I, looked, I worked in soybean. Uh, before we got Roundup ready, the, uh, the Provisia, the Assure Quasalifop was my recommendation for red rice control even over uh, select, which I consider the best overall grass herbicide available. Uh, this one was always, uh, Quisalopop was always a little, a, a step above 
from the red rods control standpoint. Now, anytime you're talking about it is squizalophop is a grass herbicide, you need to be real careful when you start mixing it with things. My recommendation is going to be do not mix it with anything just because of the potential for antagonism. As I said yesterday, and as I've said for years, I think weed science is a visual science. If you're not looking at it, I can tell you 90% control, but what does that mean to you? So what I try to do here is kind of show you exactly what happened. This is real world. I'm not showing you something that we made up going to take a picture of, of, of weedy plots. This is basically provisia by itself. Uh, you know, at 15 and a half ounces per acre, you got 31 ounces per year. That's 15 and a half followed by 15 and a half, 18 followed by 13, 13 followed by 18. The one thing that the problem that I see coming with this technology is we don't have that third application. We're not going to have that cleanup that we had the second or third year with, with the clear field. Is that because of the label? The label's going to restrict you in getting those rates up there. Now what we're doing is we're playing a little bit, backing off some of our earlier rates, leaving three or four ounces back because sort of, sort of a seed head suppression type thing. Uh, we've done that one year, uh, missed some timings this year where I really thought we needed to be putting it out. That may be a possibility. Uh, I, I just don't know yet. But yeah, so it's, you could split it up 10, 10, 10 if you wanted to. What's the pre-harvest? Uh, I don't know what's going to be on the label. They, the label's out, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't know how. Anybody know how they got it worded? I'm not exactly sure where the pre-harvest is on it. But again, I think that's going to be an issue for us. The Sure 2 label used to be 9 by itself and 12 tank mix. You're looking at a significantly higher rate uh, with, with this herbicide in your rice than you were with the Sure. That's correct. Uh, again, you're going after it to me kind of a trouble some weed that you don't really want to fool with so I like that higher end of the rate uh, but again you know we're, we're we're a little bit shy even if you start breaking up that 31 you're I think you're going to be shy on rate at least in one of your two of your mixes uh, that's grass uh, and, and the interesting thing when you look at that you're thinking okay I've got grass but I've got some broad I've got some barnyard grass activity if I get some antagonism, maybe that, that grass will jump in there and help me out. Looks like we're probably tying up it as well, which is not unusual for an ALS herbicide. There are some antagonism issues with it. That's grass mixed with provisia. That's grass extra that has the triclopyr grandstand in it. That's regimen, basically a mirror image of what you're seeing with grass. The absolute no-no is propanil. Uh, anything with propanil in it, I would tell you not to do that. And rice bow and 2,4-D. The interesting thing about the grass is we're doing a little bit of work where we're timing, go back in the day when, okay, when do I need to put the grass herbicide out? And then how long do I need to wait before I put the broadleaf herbicide out? So what we're doing is we're coming in with the, the seven days out seven days prior to the broad leaf, three days, one day, and then tank mixing at day zero. And then following that back out, can I, if I put the broad leaf herbicide out, can I, how long do I would need to wait? If I put the broad leaf herbicide out first, how long do I need to wait before I put the grass herbicide? We've shown with just about all of these, one day is all you need. So if you spray Provisia, the next day you can come in with any broad leaf herbicide that we've looked at. The other way, if you put the broadleaf herbicide first and then follow, we never overcome the antagonism with grass. We just ne never, at seven days, now that's not going out to 14, but at seven days, we still show some antagonism. So that's, that's going to be a, I'm almost to the point where I'd say leave grass out of the system altogether, especially if you're going to put that first. What, what if we use something like lead pretty? League actually looks pretty good. Uh, any of your pre-herbicides, you're going to have that interval before you come back. And we, we've done some of that. And League's one of the ones that we've gotten away with. We know, it's not that we don't get antagonism. It's not as severe. My recommendation is you want to stay away from mixing. But if you go, you go pre, you're going to be two, three weeks out from the post-application probably anyway. You've got plenty of time there. Anybody else today? Permit's another one that we kind of 
Now, let me, let me preface this. This is an ounce of permit. We don't have many people going out with anything near that. So, in, in league, if I showed you the league picture, it would look very similar to this. But if you get in there, it's hard to see with the bubbles in the water. But if you get in there, you can kind of see I don't have that road definition there. There is some barnyard grass in there. So, we are, we are missing some of that. It's not that we don't get antagonism. It's just not as severe as with some of the other herbicides. Now here's some work that we did. 2014 was the first year that we looked at this herbicide. So I, I, I do work at St. Joe on the heavy clay soil. I do work at Crowley on the silt loam soil. When we went to St. Joe and we put our tank mixes up there, we were getting antagonism with everything. That first year, and again, you can get away with it sometimes. First year in, in Crowley, I didn't care what we mixed with it. Propanil, rice bow, whatever we mixed with, we got absolutely no antagonism. I was pretty excited about it, and then we started seeing all the antagonism at St. Joe. So then my simple mind starts telling me, okay, I got a soil issue or I have a water issue, okay? So what we did this, this particular year is the center four rows are, are 151 or 111 and the clear, uh, Clearfield Hybrid 745. The two outside rows on the plot are two rows of Provisia on either side. So this is the Provisia by itself, I could have put the, this is actually in St. Joe, I could have put the Crowley pitcher up there and I could have put, uh, you know, with the Crowley water. And what we did is we got Crowley water, took it to St. Joe, had the tank mix with the Crowley water and the St. Joe water up there, separate mixes to kind of see, okay, we narrow it down to the soil. We did the same thing in Crowley. We brought the St. Joe water back to Crowley, had the same test down there. No antagonism, of course, because it's by itself. This is Provisia with rice bow with the Crowley water in St. Joe, okay? We took out, for the most part, we took out the 111 and the 745. Pat, we put the rice bow with St. Joe water, we took the barnyard grass out, and we left a lot of the conventional lines. And I asked Pat, because I want him to tell me why, because I don't know. <laughs> you have any idea? I don't. I have no idea. Did y'all do any water analysis? We haven't done that yet. We're actually going to do sample. You know, for example, and Johnny Sachek, Chuck always brought this up, and we actually went back and looked. The Baton Rouge water system's high in sodium. So, you know, there's probably something. And these are community water systems, so there's probably something. The weird thing is it was, you know, it flip-flopped on me. So it, it, there's obviously something in there. You know, we saw it, and then we're just trying to see what, you know, if it's true or not. And then the next ant the next question is can we solve so that the, problem? So the Crowley water that was coming from uh, from the, the South Farm. So it's not the yeah. well. Yeah, the South Farm, you know we are Crow Crowley at the South Farm now, I have a community system down there. Because you remember the big <laughs> tank down there had so much rust and so we had to get away from that. But yeah, it is a community community system as well. And you know, if you ask about pH We've tested several pHs in community water systems throughout Louisiana. Every one of them are above eight, which is surprised to me. I was surprised at that. They're somewhere in the eight three to eight six range, a lot higher. And the interesting thing is, as you leave them on a bench and open up, normally that water will come back down to neutral as it sits in the open air. These waters, these systems don't seem to self-adjust like that. Again, from my perspective, uh, 15 and a half. I like the 15 and a half, 15 and a half, uh, but the 13, 18, 18, 13, either way it's good. Uh, really good on Neely Sprangle Top, Amazon Sprangle Top, good on Fall Panic on Water Pass Phalum and the Weedy Rices. We're getting some suppression of Brooks Pass Phalum, rice cut grass, and southern water grass, you know, in that 40, 50 range. Uh, and then those are greenhouse trials. Again, I would, I would caution anybody about mixing it. You know, water sources could be an issue as well. Uh, I think it's a really good weedy rice herbicide. Uh, if it is present, you're not in a one-year rotation, though. I mean, if you've got a serious problem like some of the fields that we have in South Louisiana, it's not a one-year cleanup. It's going to take a little while. Uh, again, it's a, it's a program approach. And hopefully we can get this weedy rice, kind of get a hold of it, and maybe we can extend the life of both of our technologies. Hey, Bit Cut-off date's PI. It's PI? Okay. That, I kind of figured that's probably where they would be because that's usually where most of those things are. So that would, that would get us. 
if we uh, start off with command and we come in with our first application, and we can we use prowl in it for a second residual without antagonism? We're, we've looked at that and, and to say that at that at the younger the rice, you tend not to see the antagonism. It's not that it's not happening. It's just that you got enough in the system in that mix to overcome it. We've seen it both ways, BD, with the prowl. We've seen antagonism with, with not. I don't think we can afford the antagonism because we have one goal in mind, and that's to terminate the, the non-desirable right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of my feeling, especially the first year or two to you get you know get a, a sense of what's going on, how to use it. I'm just I just think it's best that we don't push the system. Bob and I had the conversation last week at a meeting that we were at in Birmingham. He says these guys are going to mix it and clean it up on the second shot. If we if we spray it first and we come back, if we're lucky enough the next day with whatever broadly herbicide, we could put the grass residual in that. Tank. Yeah, right. And where you're where you're overlaying your residuals like you do with the command up front and then back with a prowl or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know you're coming back, yeah, that's what I would do. I wouldn't chance it. Bob, did I misrepresent our conversation? I don't. That's not what I'm telling them to do, but that's what. That's what they're going to do. do. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll we'll see that. We'll see guys doing that, and then you'll get away with it. Uh, like I say, smaller, the smaller the grass, <coughs> you'll probably will get away with it. But you know, you start pushing that grass size a little bit, and then Often it becomes. you'll get <coughs> a flush of grass and one to two leaf whatever barnyard spring on top and that undesirable rice won't be out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know as well as I do, our sprinkle top comes up with a tiller on it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean it's already got some size, but yeah, you're right there. The benzo, we got just a couple more minutes here. The benzo's a bleacher, new mode of action. Uh, where we really like it, it's, it's, a, it's an aquatic herbicide for us. We get pretty good activity, and these are the kind of things our guys coming out of a crawfish rotation. These are the kind of things that we deal with. The interesting thing is, and Jason Norsworthy in Arkansas is doing some work on it. He's actually seen some activity on red. I saw a student give a presentation last week. He had everything broke down, 80 to 100% control, 60 to 80%. He showed 29% of 100 populations, he showed 29% of those red rice populations that he collected were 80 to 100% control. 10% of those populations were 100%. So you can put it out there and you may get it if you've got what I think is probably true red and not the outcross. Uh, but it's not something that I'd put out thinking I'm going to get it. I'm not. I'm gonna clean this field up. You may be lucky and have those in there that you're, you're getting. The indicas tend to be more sensitive, uh, in which a lot of the red rice has an indica background there. Uh, again, we've seen a little bit of injury. Early flooding really works well because you can get the herbicide out there. It is. I guess if you had a disadvantage, it's slow. I tell people it's not visually pleasing because it takes a little bit of time. But that's kind of what we're seeing. This is the X-ray, 8.4 ounces. Uh, that's kind of barn, uh, duck salad control we're getting with this product. So, it, and it will hold for a good while. Loyant, we talked about this yesterday. Another new mode of action, even though it's an auction, it's a totally new mode of action. It works in a little bit different spot from 24D and Grandstand. Uh, pint per acre, methylated seed oil is what I would recommend it. The, the formulation that you will buy will have a little bit of uh, methylated seed oil in it. So it's kind of that insurance policy is kind of the way I look at it. Places where we've seen some injuries on cut ground. Uh, again, it controls an auction that controls grasses, sedges, and broadleaves, especially some of our aquatic perennials. And it, the interesting thing is it is faster on Indian joint vets in Sesbania. Equal control, but just quicker on, on joint vets, which is kind of unusual. We don't normally see that. The one weed that it will miss almost a zero, I, would, I counted a zero as Texas wheat, uh, which is, me, kind of kind of surprises me. That may be one of those, those guys, I get that call every year saying I want to get a dove field with Texas wheat in it, this might be your herbicide right here, because <laughs> it, uh, it, it does basically no activity. 
uh, barnyard grass. And so we're getting some seedling fall panicum activity and some seedling mealies as well. Not the big stuff, but the, the seedling. A little bit of suppression on Brooks Pass Palum. And uh, basically no activity on cut grass or water pass palum. Uh, no residual. If you spray it, no flood, get it established within about three days. If you wait too much longer, you'll start getting a break in that control. Uh, good safety on drill and water seeded rice. They'll probably get a label sometime this year, but it'll be too late for the use in 2017. So first use in 18. That's creeping burrhead, one of our big issues. And uh, of course, duck salad around it. This is actually a Dallas grass that was growing in this ditch on the North Farm. That's an area of uh, uh, southern water grass, and there's a little bit of rice cut grass in this ditch as well. We just sprayed it, kind of see what we were going to do. I didn't expect it to do much to Dallas grass, but what you'll see on barnyard grass, any of the species that has activity, it'll start to swell right at the right at the base of the, the plant, right at the soil level, and it'll just break off. You can actually go down there and grab it, and it just snaps in two. Uh, other than that, that's about all I have. If anybody has any questions, any uh, suggestions about the Neely sprinkler top? How to keep it under control? If if I had Neely's, I would work the ground, not try to c control that big perennial. That thing's a year old. Uh, Rice Star HT right now, at 24 ounces, is would be my recommendation for control. It's the best that we've seen. Seedling stuff, clincher's not bad on with moisture, but you got to get it when it's small. It's not as good on that big, you know, that big, healthy, one-year-old stuff. Dr. Webster, how moisture-dependent is provisions? Not near as moisture-dependent as a clincher. You can actually put it out on dry ground. Of course, anytime these grass herbicides have moisture, they're going to work better. Uh, but you can do it on firm ground uh, with a ground rig. It's, it's, it's not near as sensitive to moisture it's as a like clincher. Rice star, rice star actually works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably a little bit better than that. All right, thank y'all.